Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a real honor to introduce uh, to you this morning Mrs. Jennifer James, a fourth generation rice and soybean farmer from Newport, Arkansas. Jennifer farms with her father and brother on the recognized Arkansas Century Farm. The family takes great pride in their operation's commitment to providing overwinter habitat for waterfowl and instituting practices that conserve water. Over the course of her career, Jennifer has held many roles as an active member of the rice industry at the state and national levels. Jennifer is currently serving as a chair of the USA Sustainability Committee, member of the USA Rice Farmers Board of Directors, vice chairman of the Arkansas Rice Farmers Board of Directors, member of the Arkansas Agricultural Board, and many other positions. The list goes on and on. Jennifer and her husband, Greg, have one 16-year-old son, Dylan, who hopes to follow in the footsteps of his parents and grandfather to work on the family farm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mrs. James, last week I was encouraged that we might finally be able to export rice to China with the completion of the phytosanitary agreement. As the world's largest consumer of rice, uh, that represents a tremendous market, and certainly we have to open new markets for all of our commodities as we go forward. That, that truly is key. Uh, we're working hard to try and uh, open the uh, market with Cuba. Uh, they import 80 percent of their, their um, food, and so that, that would, again, be a tremendous market for all of us. Uh, we operate on an international market, however, many actions by foreign governments uh, distort world markets, as we've talked about. And uh, uh, again, this is a clear example of why we need to uh, have a safety net for our farmers at home. Could you describe uh, in more detail how Title I programs have helped your farm as well as the local economy and surrounding rural communities during this challenging economic time for farming? Could you also describe the importance in Title I programs of managing uh, the risk from multi-year sustained low prices? Yes, thank you, Senator. And I look forward to hopefully exporting some rice to China as well. Uh, the Title I programs for rice have, have been uh, life savers, actually business savers. They've kept us in business, specifically the PLC program. Our main risk in rice production is price volatility, and so this has helped, helped us tremendously. Um, we're entirely irrigated, and our yields don't fluctuate as much. And, but just like you said, we are at the mercy of the marketplace. Um, I don't have many of the same risks as other row crops, uh, or especially dry land crops, so uh, the irrigation is my insurance policy most of most years. PLC provides protection in multi-year price declines, and it's not a complex program, and I do have a, a floor at which I is steady from year to year. Agriculture is very important to my community as well as other ag communities across this country. It's the driver of all the economics and we can certainly see a difference in my community when agriculture uh, is down and when it is up. So it, it, uh, it hurts our schools, it hurts our hospitals, it hurts many other areas in our local economies when we have bad ag years. Very good. I hear a lot of uh, concerns from producers about how further ratcheting down payment limitations could impact family uh, farmers. Can you briefly describe what would happen to your family's farm if a payment limit of $50,000 was adopted in this farm bill? If a payment limit of $50,000 were to be adopted, it would most likely put my family farm out of business and many others like mine. Just to give you a little example, um, $50,000 in the current price situation would cover around 250 acres of rice. Um, with the cost of the tillage equipment, the planting equipment, a combine, a grain cart, semi-trucks to, to haul that rice to market, uh, it would not be economically feasible to plant 250 acres of rice. So um, that payment limit just is not economically feasible. Very good. I want to ask the panel, uh, and quickly, because we're running out of time, I don't want the chairman getting on to me, but about uh, farm credit. Uh, can can you start uh, and, and perhaps talk a little bit about how the Title I programs and crop insurance, when you go to your banker to secure a loan, uh, how important they are? And then also, uh, if we're having trouble with credit uh, otherwise. The uh, crop insurance program specifically is, is very important for uh, the securing loans. 
especially with uh, young farmers as, as well as established farmers, is that uh, you need to have access to credit. And uh, this, uh, by having a good solid uh, far, uh, risk protection program like federal crop insurance, it uh, ensures the banker that he will be able to uh, have the loan serviced. So it's crucial. Is your all's experience, do the bankers understand the, the, uh, the farm program? Do they understand the, uh, uh, the safety nets that are out there? Is credit more difficult? I use a small town uh, family banker and he's also a farmer. Okay. He understands. If, <clears throat> if, if our bankers don't understand it, uh, then you better make sure they do because um, uh, if they have questions, um, then it's not a very good lending situation. And the crop insurance does give them some security. Uh, we have such huge input costs uh, in farming right now that uh, if you don't have some back, backing on that, um, the, the uh, credit then is, is pretty difficult to obtain. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Senator. Uh, bankers understand the crop insurance, and it is a vital component uh, that they're utilizing there. I think the challenge with the Title I is on the uh, ARC side is an inconsistency in payments across counties, and so sometimes it becomes difficult for them to factor that in, and then the delayed payment of PLC makes it difficult, especially, again, for those beginning young farmers trying to establish credit. Very good. Thank you, Senator Bozeman. Uh, crop insurance is a critical tool for us, and, and with our bankers, the cotton industry, we're under a very serious credit crunch. And with cotton not being a Title I commodity, uh, bankers understand that but are reluctant to give loans out because there is no safety net. Crop insurance is just a tool for a temporary thing, so that further exemplifies the need for cotton to be Title I because credit for cotton farmers is, is getting to be harder and harder to get, and for a young person, with the cost of a new John Deere harvester at $750,000 and he must farm 2,000 acres of cotton to justify one, it's virtually impossible to get that credit. So we need cotton back in Title I and we need uh, that to help our credit also. Yeah. Ms. James. I would say that the crop insurance for rice uh, essentially is, it doesn't work quite as well. So bankers do understand about the PLC program and the Title I and how important it is for rice lending. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.